in a time of little faith, this man believed. <laughs> The substance of his belief was that to grow to be a whole man, a boy must have his roots in faith. And on this he founded a school. It began here, in this house, a decade ago. and the old house welcomed the young ones who came to it. Its tired rooms that had been quiet for so long were suddenly shaken into exciting life again. And the Rabbi Rosen, with love and wisdom and devotion, breathed a spirit into his school. So, when the rabbi died, the dream lived, and out of this one man's vision, Carmel College grew. Those who followed on moved on, and around the warm heart of the old house, the new school buildings have risen. New laboratories, new classrooms too, built in the knowledge that the first step to enlightenment is light, and that horizons are ultimately broader if you start from a basis of space. To the new art room at Carmel, the boys come in their own time of their own choice. You cannot sit a boy down, says David Stamler, headmaster of Carmel, and demand that he paint a picture. And so during all free time, the art master is here available to instruct and advise all those who come of their own free will. There are new dormitories too. All these donated by those with vision clear enough to see ahead along the path that the Rabbi Rosen pointed out. The newest of these is the Sacker House, living quarters of the senior boys, with studies for sixth formers, two to each room. Houses too have been built at Carmel to be homes for those who work and teach here, and others are planned. Planned in the belief that to obtain the best, you must first offer the best. So that the classrooms and the dormitories and the homes can grow, the land must first be ploughed up a little. But already the landscapers are at work, and soon the scars will be healed over, and in the final phase of its development, Carmel will stand proud out of a lovely garden. That a boy might grow to be a whole man, his roots must be bedded in faith. But faith and knowledge are not the perquisites of privilege. Carmel's lap is wider than this. What began as an experiment is now the reality, and if the reality is to continue in the image and likeness of Rabbi Rosen's dream, Carmel must continue to be a place to which all boys may come. A place in which all boys without regard to wealth or status 
may have by means of free or assisted scholarship at least the opportunity to live and to learn. Carmel College is a school. It is a boys' public school. Carmel is rather special. It is a school for Jewish boys. It has taken the best of the English public school system and linked it with the best of the Jewish pioneering spirit and sense of community. The result is Carmel College. Some years ago, the principal, Rabbi Koppel Rosen, fired enough people with the idea of starting a public school for Jewish boys that they were able to open in this building. Surrounding them were XRAF huts, which were used for classrooms. The school started as a wonderful idea. Some would say an ideal. Carmel College has grown in only 13 years, so that it is now a school for 300 boys from all over the world. But the enthusiasm for the ideas behind the school is as strong as ever. Carmel is not so much a school as a community. A community where boys learn lessons, achieve the highest academic standards, and where they become imbued with the Jewish way of life against the day they leave. Here is one of the boys now at Carmel to give you some impression of his life at the school. My name is Ian Panto. I'm 15 years old and have been at Carmel College for two years. Before that, I was at a grammar school in Brighton. I am studying uh, English language, English literature, um, maths, um, history, Latin, French, and um, economics. At the moment, I'm 5A. And uh, I'll be in there for another term until I, I take my O-levels at um, June. Um, I'm going to do nine subjects at O-level. Well, yes, it, it is rather a lot, but about seven of them are really just in your course, and it's really only an end of term exam, as far as you're concerned. And uh, I am taking a few other um, O-levels, which will mean a lot of hard work, but I'm prepared to do it. I must say here that the difference between a boarding school and an ordinary school is that the masters who teach you are so much more your friends. You're not uh, at an ordinary school, a grammar school, the master's simply there during the lessons, and that's the end. I find that all the teachers that, that are teaching me at the moment are all very good teachers, and I like them all. We do have um, a meeting in the school. Um, it's called the 36 Club. In this club, we, we meet usually once uh, a month, and in there we have all sorts of lectures from different various people, and we have had quite a few uh, of music and I really enjoy it. All the lectures about music, and we have heard many different uh, records of music, and I do enjoy it. And I think that after listening to these lectures, and after hearing these records, I am beginning to take quite an, quite an interest in music. There's the, um, the Union Society, and they meet every Saturday. I am a member. It's purely for the fifth and sixth formers. There is a junior, li uh, junior um, union, which are solely for the second and third forms. For instance, uh, last week's um, debate was um, this house abhors civil disobedience as a means to any end. The motion was carried forward. The library is excellent. And they've got the fiction library and the reference library. And the reference library is kept in silence the whole time. And if one wants to work, one can work there. And the books there are, are really good. I mean, you've got the history books, English books. Any book which you need is in the library. And the fiction books are also Quite a large um, number of them are in the library. It's really an excellent library. Of course, there's the loja in the school, where we have every newspaper, um, and of course we have magazines. And every day I do go and uh, read the papers. I'm captain of chair, and I take an active, very active part in the game. And I do my best to um, help all the other boys in the school to, um, well, to take an active interest in it. Oh yes, it's it is very simple to go up to the headmaster and simply knock on his door and of course you'll hear him yell come in but um it is very simple really you can go up to him and tell him any of your troubles and he'll be very very kind to you and he'll he'll really understand you and help you in any way which is possible feel at ease when you're in his company and you can of course straight away tell any troubles that you have i live in the main building in the dormitories with six other boys we go into the dormitories after 
our prep, nine o'clock in the evenings. And we use that place for reading, for having a chat with our friends. One boy's impressions of just some parts of the life at Carmel College. But, for example, he isn't studying science. This is a science laboratory at the school. It is housed in one of the old huts. Not a very convenient building for a science laboratory, but the equipment and facilities provided are of the very highest standards. In fact, the school has been congratulated in a Ministry of Education report for providing such good facilities for the study of the sciences. Here, some of the senior boys are at work on individual experiments. There is a separate laboratory for biology lessons, again in one of the original hutted classrooms. This small group of junior boys is examining some anatomical specimens under the supervision of the biology master. There is also the space and time for a senior boy to study individually. He's looking at a slide, and the master has time to be able to help and advise him. The school's sports don't stop at chess. Carmel College is on the banks of the Thames, and the school is proud of its rowing successes, gained in competitions with other schools, and also at Henley Regatta. The first eight is a dedicated group of boys, here seen training in a fine November drizzle, closely followed by the four, being encouraged, not pushed, by the school's launch. The other principal sports are cricket, tennis, basketball, and football, as you can see here. The spectator suffering agonies is Rabbi Rosen, a keen footballer himself. Now this is a PT class, dressed in football clothes and boots, doing their training and exercises on the playing fields. The reason is that at the moment Carmel College has no gymnasium, as the old one became unsafe and had to be demolished. Meanwhile, the boys must make up for the lack of a gym and its equipment by improvising. This exercise would normally be done on horizontal bars. Here, the boys support each other, and will until the new gymnasium is built. You can appreciate that some of the old buildings are now inadequate for the number of boys at the school. At this moment, there is a huge building program underway. This model gives you some idea of the vision of Rabbi Rosen and the Board of Governors. By 1965, Carmel College will look like this. Already, some parts of this plan have been completed. This is the projection on the model of the junior school. This building already exists, converted and extended from an existing house in the grounds, and provides a modern, spacious building for dormitories and classrooms. This block on the model represents the sanatorium, and it is already standing. The sanatorium was donated to Carmel College, and is finally designed to provide medical services and attention for the whole school. These oblong slabs are part of the new dormitory blocks. The fine modern buildings were also donated and house the younger boys in the school. Two and three stories high, they now stand proudly isolated, waiting to be joined by the rest of the new buildings. Elsewhere in the grounds, around these present buildings, the foundations are being laid, the school is growing. The huge building program is getting into its stride. The next phase, due for completion in 1962, will provide new classrooms, science block, gymnasium, and the synagogue. This is the main building of the present school, and it will continue to be the hub of the new Carmel College. Directly opposite, the foundations are in for the new classroom block. Here you can see on the model how the new block, two stories high, will face the old main building across a paved terrace. The new block will replace these huts, which have given good service as classrooms, and which now look out onto a sea of mud, the foundations for the new building which will provide modern classrooms for the whole school. On the model, this represents the new science block to replace these old huts which house the present laboratories. By their side, the foundations for the new block are going in, wet trenches filled with concrete and steel to support the brand new science building. The beginnings are here, in these steel fingers. This will be the new gymnasium, fully equipped, complete with swimming pool, showers, locker rooms, and fives courts. There is only a desolate waste where the old gymnasium has been torn down, leaving the ground ready for the men and machines to drive in the foundations for the brand new building. And here on the model is the new synagogue. Even on this minute scale, you can envisage the sweep of its roof, the sheer hang of its glass walls. On the ground, piles of earth and rubble mark the site. Soon these mounds, this rubble, will lie underneath a beautiful, spacious synagogue. All these plans are designed to expand Carmel from its present size of 300 boys to 500 and to house them in the finest modern buildings. Carmel College is not owned by anyone. 
It is directed by Rabbi Rosen and by the Board of Governors, men from many different fields who devote a lot of time and energy to the idea that is Carmel College. They hold it in trust for the whole Anglo-Jewish community and try to provide an environment where any boy can receive the best possible education in an atmosphere of freedom. Carmel College will never make any money. No talented boy who applies is refused admission, and 20% of the boys now at Carmel are on scholarships or reduced fees. The Development Committee and the Board of Governors hold themselves responsible for raising the funds. The present phase of the building program will cost £250,000, and even while the work is in progress, most of the money still has to be raised. Over the next few years, vast sums must be found to complete Carmel College. In the last few years, Carmel has grown. More boys have come to the school. Many more have applied. There are boys on the waiting lists ten years ahead. Whose names and how many can be on this board in the future? Carmel College extends an open invitation to all of you to come and visit the school. Come and talk to the principal. Talk to the boys. Walk in the grounds and feel the air of excitement and enthusiasm for the future. When you come, you'll be able to see the work in progress. Work designed to make a school for the future leaders of the Jewish community. Carmel College is our gift to the future generations.